we are going to continue our conversation and dialogue about the hidden king of England and many other things of an esoteric and interesting nature. Among other things, we, uh, of course, reference Greg's primary work that's out there in printed form. It's called The Hidden King of England. It's a five-volume set. I very strongly recommend that people pick up that set. If you're interested in history and you're interested in hidden history, uh, I'm an avid researcher and reader of history and putting together the multi-dimensional, multi-layered puzzle of, of history, digging in behind the superficial storyline, which is pretty much all a lie. And if you're interested in history, I absolutely insist you go to Greg's website and you order his five-volume set. Uh, you will learn things about uh, the history of England over the last 200-plus years, the whole lineage of what people think is the royal family, the so-called Windsors, and uh, where that goes back to original bloodlines. And it's quite an extraordinary story. And so I highly recommend that. Everything is so incredibly interlinked and so predicted. And the whole world actually runs on predictions. And predictions take precedence over everything else. A prophet is technically one who predicts things, but a good prophet is one who predicts things and gets things right. <laughs> Jesus and Mary, as they're known in the Christian world, were acknowledged as prophets in Christianity and also in the Arabic world. From the book of predictions, which was written by Jesus, who was sometimes known as John or Emmanuel or Yeshua or Joshua, his predictions are just fantastically accurate to the time and place. And when Sir Walter Raleigh got the book of predictions, he could write and read in six languages. So he was the perfect person to get the book of predictions. And from that, he virtually restarted Rosicrucianism. Sir Walter Raleigh was given North Carolina or Carolina and Virginia. He was virtually given Prince Regent Duke Governor status of North America. In the book, you reference Jesus with Akhenaten, going back to the Egyptian line. You made reference earlier here to Tut. So are they the lineal descendants from, from Tut, who was the son of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, and then they, they had the royal line. So when they came to the West, to the Algarve in London, that's where the, the building of what you describe in the book, all of the esoteric layout of the city of London and the temple bar and the law that was the basis and remains the basis of law worldwide and the control system essentially through the law by the so-called controllers of the city of London and all of that. So do they have that royal lineage going back to Tut and Akhenaten? Going back and going forward, there's many types of families, and one of the types of families is the initiation family. A certain amount of clarity and ability that comes with these initiations that puts one into the, oh yeah, I did that. You know you're the one when you are Isis chosen and when you have a Hebsed festival with Anubis, that's when you're the highest initiate of the Egyptian mysteries. In The Mummy, 2017 with Tom Cruise, The Mummy says, Sif Papayetch, help. Sif Papayetch, help. Sif Papayetch. Ben, to to air, Anem. Ben, to to air, Anem. Iwak air, Shasef Tayef set. Iwak air, Shasef Tayef set.
Sir Walter Raleigh was so impressed with it that he bred himself into my family. His name is actually a codification of my name. If you take off the initial letters W or R, Walter Raleigh is an anagram of Grail Hallett. Okay. He had 65 different spellings of his name and 11 foreign spellings of his name. He started roast to the Crucianism. He was virtually the Prince Regent Duke Governor of America, and this mark is the Prince Regent Duke Governor of the Ports of the Algarve. And the Ports of the Algarve used to go 10 kilometres inland, and what's happened about every 400 years, there's a massive earthquake there, and the land rises up 10 metres. So the land that was a harbour, like Milru, is now 40 metres higher, and the river going into, now only out of Milru, is called the Rio Seco, Dry River. But it used to be the Marshall Harbour, which was 10 kilometres inland, and bought everything Jesus wanted there, it's a harbour. People coming up for initiations into the Egyptian mysteries, which included the Caesars. So <clears throat> Jesus said, this is the Algarve Jesus, he says, I'll give you your initiation into the Egyptian mysteries, walk through that 10 kilometre long tunnel, come out at Milru, have a hot bath, tepid bath, cold bath, come into the water temple, you can swim in the swimming pools around the water temple, you can swim inside the water temple, and then you can walk in an 800 yard or 700 royal yard tunnel to the Colonnade Cross, which has got this absolutely fantastic view. It's one of the best views I've ever seen. I've got all of the Latin words and I've translated them with meaning. So I've used some knowledge that I was already given, like SS means sensu stricto, which means carry out in detail, right in the middle, in the, about the 10 o'clock level. I also related the translations to the story because when you translate Latin, there's 10 different translations. So you use a PDF of a Latin English dictionary that's as old as possible. Starting with this mark here, 400 years, 400 years of 1414 to 1814, or 1618 to 2018, mm -hmm. which is now, right? So this is supposed to come out in 2018, as it has. So Prince Regent Johannes DG is Duke Governor, Port of the Algarve, but it's E A L. G, which refers to EGLA, the organization that decides which occult information can come out and which can't. So this is a royal mark of Prince Duke Governor, which means to be king, John, Johannes, of the ports of the Algarve, commemorating the new age of discovery, which is why it fits as a key in King John III of the UK slot, which is me. This fits into the Rosicrucian cosmography, absolutely. Just under the sword, hilt of the sword, it says in a field about July, which is originally Lul de Campi. July was seventh month and it was 2014. So 2014 is a seven, two plus one plus four. So we're looking at the shin. By Noah's Ark at nine o'clock. Just to the left of that, it says Septon Trio which is a shortened version of the word north, but septon means seven, you know, seventh month, September, right. and trio means thrice. Seven thrice means 777, seven, seven, which means the shin. So they're saying that this is the forbidden secret, and they're also saying that the end times is on 777. Seven, seven. So it started on the 7th of July, 2014. Noah's Ark is time of Noah's of electricity, floods, dams and tsunamis, which we've all got, lightning and floods. On the angel above the 20, it says, in the year of the Lord. It's got a feather, and feather means Pina Castle, and King Dom Ferdinand II of Portugal brought Prince Marcos Manuel from England to Portugal. That mm -hmm. was Queen Victoria's firstborn and only legitimate son. Pina Castle's sister palace is Estoy Palace. So King Don Ferdinand II of Portugal built Pina Castle out of a monastery that had broken down from an earthquake. 
And then he renovated Estoy Palace from about 1850 to 1874. It's a beautiful palace, and it's known as the Palace of the End Times. One of the worlds went into a trance, and he said, there's no teaspoons in Estoy Palace until the end times. And I was living, like my cave was exactly, exactly 51 kilometres or 51,000 metres from the colonnade cross that Jesus had built. And it was actually 5.55 metres from the exact centre. So I went to Stoy Palace off and on to see if there were any teaspoons there. So you get a coffee, you expect a teaspoon for your sugar, no teaspoons. You get a small soup spoon. And then after the end times, there were teaspoons in the end times palace in Stoy Palace. And Stoy is Spanish for I am, as in the saying, I am that I am. And what is the significance um, of the spoons? Stoy Palace was known as the Palace of the End Times, and there were no teaspoons in Stoy Palace until after the 16th of August 2014. And then, miraculously, there were teaspoons there. It was a marker for the end times. And the markers aren't big things. These are often just tiny things that people don't notice. And then they go, hang on a minute, the end times must have been because no one's talking about it anymore. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So it says in the, in the left-hand side around mm, 8 o'clock, it says, beware of the signs. Nota means signs. But vertically, it says, by many orderly discussions we are filled. Between the two wheels, it says, be moved and inspired. Above the door, it says, come worthy. And above the windows, it says, all of these things Jesus predicted. It's quite phenomenal, you know. They're actually stating he was a prophet and he was really accurate and, and he was so accurate as a prophet that we're recording everything, but the writing of it is hard to get because it's written in ancient language and there was probably many papers. And if you put it on one drawing, then you can convey the essential information. The advantage of the drawing is you can overlay stuff so the drawing can mean many things. It says SS, which means sensu stricto, which means carry out in detail. It says tut, T-U-T, which means the Rosicrucian boy king. At 10.30, it says vidi amini, which means noticed, like you have been noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it says it again, uh, exactly the same place on the other side, noticed. It says the rising sun, a creation of the new age, and collegium fraternitatis, college fraternity. And it says 16 and 18, which means 1618, which is the year that Sir Walter Raleigh died. The number between is 17, which is the number of Portugal. Every country's got a number. So... 1618 says this is happening in Portugal. Mm -hmm. On the bird flying down at two o'clock, it says brother. And then on the other side, it says two brothers. So it's brother to brother, which means it's either Rosicrucian or Freemason information has been passed down. But I'm not sure how much of it they got. Had a tendency to waffle and not get to the point and not actually go to the location and said, hang on a minute, that's not just some cliff. That is this cliff right here. Around 2.30, it says, end times living on a cliff edge. And then it says, middle day, 7th, 7th, July 2014. And that word on the 3 o'clock position is south. At the 9 o'clock position is septum triunalis, meaning north and alluding to the shin. Oriens means east at the top. And then down the bottom, it's oxidens, which is west. But that also means in times with heavenly bodies moving. It also says future links on the top of the cliff face. Where a lot of the future links were. And there's a man falling in an X shape. The X marks the true king of England, but it's got a bent knee, it's not a fully an X shape. And he's actually getting written off by a bird's wing, which is a feather pen. They used to write with a feather pen. As in Pena Castle. Right, yeah. got it. So it's the King of Spain falling down, losing his sword and losing his purse. And I moved into the cave on the 28th of May 2014, and three days later the King of Spain abdicated, and then 
the Navy came and saluted me at that cliff face about where the castle is. So the King's Bane fell down, and then it says, I recognise my oversight, so it's a bit of humility, and it says, Head of the Fine Lineage by the Four. Down the bottom on the right-hand side, Anchor is Ankh. It's the key to life held by St. Anthony, who's St. Anthony of Portugal, which equals Antonio, which is one of my Spanish-Portuguese names, also from Emperor Caesar Antoninus, indicating that JGH will represent the end times new age. From that, it's saying Portugal and my surname. That's also Sir Walter Raleigh, King of North America, explorer, who survived his execution. Under the drawbridge, it says only saints and angels dare tread here. And then you've got a person in a hat walking with a stick. That's Sir Walter Raleigh, the explorer. And you've got him in exactly the same clothing on a horse. Now, if you represent it on a horse, it means you're a prince. So when you get the Duke of Wellington statue outside Bank and the Royal Exchange in London, he's on a horse. That's because he's considered a prince. So Walt Raleigh is on his horse. Prince Raleigh survives the 16th execution because he's heading west because Occident means west. So he's heading over the bridge, heading west. He's nonchalantly trotting along, looking at the side like that because he wasn't executed. Westing is the Egyptian word for death. The guy standing on the well, it says opinion surely, and he's pulling levers inside the castle, but the name there is P-V-T-E-U-S. They carved the Vs like that in stone, right? They couldn't really carve a U so well. You know, Us are a lot harder. So they carved a V, right? So the V is also a U. So if you get the word Putin and POTUS for President of the United States and you mix them together, you get that P-U-T-E-U-S and then P-V-T-E-V-S. So they're saying that Putin and POTUS, which is Putin and Trump, drink from the same well as myself. Mm -hmm. So that's bottom left, me pulling the lever inside the castle. Now the fulcrum point of no return... So heading into the whole end times, new age, and then times of the end, and then the consciousness of people realizing they're just run by mafias. The government's a mafia, judiciary's a mafia, and the whole system has to change. The, the fulcrum point for that was 2100, 9 p.m. on the 11th of August, 2017, and that was on a theatrical poster inside the movie Roman Holiday, 1953 which is all about a princess called Princess Anne, character Joe, played by Gregory Peck, which is Joseph Gregory. And he sits on his bed and there's a crown above his head. And she sits on the bed and the crown's still there, but there's a zero below her. What's your name? Thank you. And would you like a cup of coffee? What time is it? Oh, about one thirty. Lots of time. Lots of time. Lots of time. Lots of time. You're not what I'd call trouble. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Because it's our prediction. Yeah. See the boy with a snake wrapped around him, and there's a crown on the snake. Yeah. Is the snake with a crown means Ouroboros, mm -hmm. and the boy is actually not a bad representation of me when I was younger. And the number there is 1604. Mm -hmm. But if you look closely, the one is actually a colon. So it's colon 604. Now, Pope St. Gregory the Great died in 604, and the way they mark people is by their death date, not their birth date, because they didn't used to record birth dates. Colon means something came before, and this is coming after. 604 means Gregory, so it means second name Gregory. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty accurate, and the, you can see the tut there is pretty accurate. That's pretty clear. And FAMA is basically fame, and it means 
our reputation depends on it. So what they're saying is S-S-F-A-M-A, it's right in the center of the top of the castle. It's saying, carry this out in detail. Our reputation depends on it. And then it says, all of these things Jesus predicted. And their Rosicrucians are, are saying that we expect this to carry out in detail because it's our prediction. Yeah. The swan represents Jesus' predictions. And it's also the bridge between time and kings, but it also means Jesus' prophecy. And, you know, obviously he's a good prophet. So I'll just read off the right-hand column. This is the 400-year key handed over to Arch-Treasurer, Guardian of the Royal Secret, Gregory Hallett, which is an anagram for Holy Grail, to complete the predictions made by Jesus and held by the Rosicrucians. All of these things Jesus predicted. The Bible is primarily about predictions, especially the book of Revelations, a.k.a. the book of John. And others say that almost 25% of the Bible is predictions. So it's commonly held that it's a book of predictions, but it became Pauline when Paul took a lot of the stuff that Jesus had in the Bible. He just took it out and wrote over it and turned it into kind of rubbish. And then what was left in the Bible was the predictions that Paul did not understand. And all of those predictions that Paul did not understand that got left in the Bible, which is basically revelation, mm -hmm. have all come true. And I can show specific time and place and photos and built objects, etc., to prove that. So this 1618 etching, the Temple of the Rose of the Cross, and Revelation record Jesus' predictions of how an angle, angel, Gregory, would herald in the New Age amongst trumpets. See the trumpet coming up at the centre, heading to about 3 o'clock? Mm -hmm. To the Rosicrucians, the word angle and angel are interchangeable. And the year 1618 and 1861 are uh, interchangeable. Right. For instance, Walter Raleigh was killed in 1618, but the cartoon of his execution came out in 1861, which they consider to be the same year and therefore have some truth to it. And that cartoon has Walter Raleigh as the executioner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not being executed as the executioner. St. Peter's was built in Rome, 1506 to 1620, at the same time as the predictions were discovered and the Rosicrucian cosmography was created, 1596 to 1618, both with the boy king in mind. That's my cave here, all that bit to the right. Mm -hmm. See the cave where the king of Spain's falling off? If I get that section of the cave... I take it over to my cave and line it up. It's an exact match. So I've done it brighter here so you can see just how exact it is. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying there is Sir Walter Raleigh actually went to this cave and drew this bit of landscape. He could have drawn the big archway, but there's a chance that would fall down. And it did. It fell down in 1990. So it lasted another 400 years or so. So he drew the hard rock. It's a very hard rock there. It wasn't going to change. So what is the significance of the, um, you're saying that's the king falling off the rock? What's that signifying? Three days after moving into the cave, the king of Spain abdicated. Oh, I, okay. A lot of the royalty, they really work on predictions. So when I went to Holland a year earlier and I was questioned by a government agent working in immigration, and I told them what I was doing, and she went and told the Queen. That was on the Friday, and then the Queen abdicated on the Monday. Yeah. Because they know from, from predictions, when this happens, get out. Mm -hmm. So then actually what you're saying is when all these things are fulfilled as they were predicted, it's the beginning of the end of the old age and the dissolution of the monarchies and things like that through abdication. And I've affected two abdications so far, I can do this stuff because I've had the Hebs Head Festival twice, you know, so I've got abilities that others don't. <laughs> That's what the Hebs Head's about. So you can see the cave that, that Walter Raleigh's drawn in the middle of the picture. 
Mm-hmm. And that is accurately my cave. I don't think there's any question that that's what it is. There's just too many points that are lining up. You've got the King of Spain falling and losing his sword and his purse, mm-hmm. and you've got the wings above them, uh, the two birds flying, and there are birds flying around there. And in the first century AD predictions, according in Latin from Amsterdam, it says white cliffs where the birds talk or cliffs where the white birds talk. And they do talk there, and they're saying fratry nautia TS, which is heavily codified. So the S is written as an F, vice versa, from between 500 and 1800 AD, and it means times of the end. The code of words fratry means brother, and the Christian covenant word for Jesus is brother, and the Christian covenant word for God is father. The father's name is also Joseph. So any words like Yahweh or God or father can mean Joseph, and words like fratry and brother can mean Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. If we take the the swan means Jesus' prophecy fulfilled, and we add that the swan is sitting exactly above the cave where I lived for four months. Mm -hmm. So it's saying that that prophecy is fulfilled, and the, the letter open, the marker, this hair that's sitting through the swan, actually fits with, the indentation in the cave. Swan also being the um, the image of the newborn baby being carried in by the swan, so it's like emerging from the cave after you're reborn. The 2019 cover of The Economist, where they have you know the world in 2019, they have a swan carrying yeah. a baby in a uh, swaddling. Oh, well, that's interesting. So here, if we relate the, the cliff face drawing, Raleigh's cliff face drawing, so the cliff face is a perfect match right down to the G, which means great architect of God's work. Right, so the G is on the drawing. And the G is actually in the photo on the cliff face as well. White birds means angels or angle or anglia. There's a black ewe lamb there, which I'll show, represents the right to rule the world. The swan equals Jesus' prophecy and godly king's birth. And I've written on the cliff face, it helps to be a biblical figure if you've lived in a cave. There's Noah's Ark up here on the cliff face, church there. The drawbridge was built May to October 2014. So while the Seed Times New Age was happening, they actually built the drawbridge and anything under there is only saints and angels dare tread below, meaning mm-hmm. it's rough ground, dangerous in places. Within three days of moving in, fulfilling the prophecy, King Juan Carlos of Spain is falling, losing his sword and purse. And then 31st of May, he announced he's going to abdicate, and he fully abdicated on the 19th of June. And a feather with pen, which means pina, scratches him out. There's you can see there's like a pen mark going through him as he's falling off the cliff. It looks yeah. like he's been scratched out of history. Mm-hmm. And he's in a semi X shape. X marks the true king of England. And Juan Carlos was the biological father of Prince William of the UK. Right. And that's why he's almost in an X shape, but falling over a cliff. And what they actually did was take him to Africa and break his leg. Oh, really? All right. Uh, yeah, that was because I exposed him as the father of Prince William mm-hmm. while he was the honorary president of the Almanac de Gotha, which records all the royalty. So they scratched him out. So which bloodline or lineage is uh, Juan Carlos? You could argue that it's none because General Francisco Franco had control of Spain from 1931 to 1975. The woman he married, Sophia, she's descended from blind King George V of Hanover, mm-hmm. but he had married bigamously 
because he's still married to Queen Victoria, which means that Queen Sophia of Spain is from an illegitimate lineage. Bigamous. Mm -hmm. These are all reasons why they abdicated. King Don Ferdinand II of Portugal ruled from 1837 to 53, but people still called him King Dom until his death, which was about... 1885. Just right at the end of the end times new age, a cloud comes into the cave that is a very good description of him. And he built Pina Castle, which is Feather Castle. So I don't know if you can see it, but here's, here's King Don Ferdinand II here, and here's his face tilted, moustache and chin and beard and nose, and then there's a feather going in his eye. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you can make that out. Yeah. That's called pareidolia, when things like that happen in clouds and in trees, etc. It's called pareidolia. So he brought Prince Marcos Manuel to Portugal, and Marcos became King John II of the United Kingdom. And he also built the End Times Palace. He had 777 plastered above the windows, made to look like pine trees or Christmas trees, but it reads 777, which confirmed it was the End Times Palace. He was also a leading theosophist who codified who would represent the end times new age to completion. And this is all part of the tradition received. He, he was incredibly famous in Portugal, still is. He's the most loved royal in Portugal's history. There is a strong correlation between King Dom Ferdinand II of Portugal and Sir Walter Raleigh of England based around Stoy Palace, the Palace of the End Times. Raleigh around 1600 and Ferdinand in the 1800s both built sister palaces to mark the end times. King Dom Ferdinand II of Portugal was infatuated with Sir Walter Raleigh and kept his diaries inside his Pina Palace apartment in Sintra. From here, Ferdinand overlooked where Joseph Gregory Hallett wrote the hidden king of England, Arma Christi unveiling the rose, designated as the shin or forbidden secret from 1812 to 2012 or thereabouts. From King Dom Ferdinand's apartment in Pina Palace, it was exactly 1,000 metres northeast to Hotel Sintra Jardim, where Joseph Gregory Hallett wrote. Here, 14 metres outside, was a well in the shape of the Shekinah S and Forbidden Secret Shin, with another 18 metres to the Theosophical Society, which King Dom Ferdinand attended. The 18 metres and 14 metres relates to the 1814 on the royal mark of the Prince Regent Duke Governor Johannes of the Ports of the Algarve, which marks King John III of the United Kingdom. This also binds the two Jesuses, John of England and Johannes of the Algarve, whose lines joined in Emperor Caesar Antoninus Pius, who ruled 138 to 161 AD. His reign the most peaceful in the 311 year history of the Roman Empire First Period, 27 BC to 284 AD. Joseph Gregory Hallett's Portuguese-Spanish surname is Antoni Pura. Pius and Pura both mean pure, as in pure Antoninus, meaning of both Jesus' lineage. <laughs>